So here we are on the Pennsylvania side of where Washington crosses Delaware. Across from Titusville, New Jersey. I guess this would be considered uh, Washington Crossing State Park. I'm not sure if this is Bucks County of Pennsylvania. The visitor center is behind me, but it is obviously closed due to the pandemic. Um, but this, this is, this is a history right here. We're standing near the spot where Washington crossed the Delaware on Christmas night of 1776, the eve of the Battle of Trenton, erected 1895 by the Bucks County Historical Society. And so these buildings here are, I guess, the structures that have been preserved, that have stood since the time of the crossing. It's a beautiful day, it's only about 44 degrees. Very comfortable. I almost didn't even need this jacket. But on the night of December 25th, 1776, <laughs> the men did not enjoy these ideal conditions. As I talked about in the previous video I made, it was a blizzard that night. Snow, rain, and sleep mixed together, hovering the temperature around freezing, the high 20s, low 30s, sometimes above freezing. It would just fluctuate throughout the night, creating a nasty wintry mix. And these men were not nearly as well clothed as I am. They were in rags, many without shoes, and yet they braved the elements. And 2400 crossed the river, right here. And here's some awesome info. Every year, reenactors cross at this spot, depicting Washington's army crossing on Christmas uh, Eve or Christmas Day, I suppose they do it. But this year they canceled it because of the pandemic. But these are the boats that Washington's men used that night. Long, flat bottom boats called Durham boats. Uh, and the boats housed in this barn are reproductions of the mid 18th century vessel that they called the Durham boat. Robert Durham invented it. Uh, and he was a engineer at the nearby Durham Iron Works in Regalsville, PA. And uh, they were used to transport ore, fur, timber, coal, and plenty of other things down the river because back then there was no, uh, there were no automobiles and there was no bridges across the river. So if you needed to get supplies across, you used a boat. And these boats, were used by Washington's men to cross that fateful night. So, very interesting. Very interesting. And here on this billboard is an updated map showing the Nine Mile March and the crossing and the events that uh, occurred here that night. So, they started here at McConkey's Ferry, crossed over to the, John to the Johnson Ferry House side, went across and not marched up the road nine miles before they split at an intersection here and Sullivan's division and Green's division split and then attacked the town that way. And Ewing's forces, which were New Jersey militia, failed to cross that night. But there you go, because there was too much ice in the river, they couldn't even cross, but that's their route. Showing some really, you know, just giving you a easy visualization. So here we go. This stood at the time of the battle. And this is known as McConkie's Ferries Inn. We'll read the plaque here. This 18th century inn and tavern was owned by Samuel McConkie. The inn served as the guard post during the Continental Army's encampment in Buck County in December of 1776. Earthworks and cannon defended the ferry landing. According to tradition, this inn is where Washington is aides ate their dinner prior to crossing on the Delaware on Christmas Day. And so I guess additions were made later in the years and uh, served in as an inn for many decades. So it was an inn at the time of the battle, owned by Samuel McConkie, an 18th century building indeed. You can tell simply because look at the structure. That is native Pennsylvania fieldstone. Uh, and you can see, look, the, all the different sizes and types of stone used for the construction with the mortar in between. 
That's Native Stone. And that was the tavern, owned and operated by Samuel McConkie, who was a very devout patriot. He was a very loyal patriot to the American cause. And uh, his home played a pivotal role in American history. So here, across the icy banks, the Pennsylvania side of the Delaware River, are the graves of 23 men who died in the aftermath or before uh, the Battle of Trenton and Princeton. As I stated, Washington's men were camped along here before the battle. And not a single soldier died in the action itself. A few were wounded, including the fifth president, future fifth president of the United States, James Monroe, who was 18 years old at the time and uh, was present, fought at the battle, was wounded, and recovered the Thompson Neely House, which is a ways behind me, uh, that was used as a field hospital. But the 23 men who inhabited that hospital and perished are buried here. 23 graves. It's such a beautiful thing to see that the wreaths and the flags are placed, especially this festive time of year, only four days away from Christmas, December 21st. The only one that's marked is of Mr. James Moore, Captain James Moore, an artilleryman in the Continental Army, centered here, who perished of illness. In memory of many unknown soldiers of the Continental Army who died from sickness and exposure while encamped in these fields before the Battle of Trenton and were buried at this spot, Christmas Day, 1776, erected by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania in 1929. So before the crossing even took place, before the miraculous victory even occurred, these men perished along the icy riverbanks here in Pennsylvania. And I'm sure many of them died believing that they had died for a lost cause. And that is a terrible way to go. But 
were it for not the heroism of them and of all their comrades that crossed that evening and won the astounding, miraculous, life-changing, world-changing victory at Trenton the next day, we would not have a country. So here on this solemn cemetery, we remember every single soldier and every single soul who sacrificed for the cause of liberty. Thanks so much for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and never forget the sacrifices of those who came before us. We must remember our history and our American heroes to know where we're headed. Without knowing your history, you don't know where who you are and what the future holds. Remember that this Christmas as you celebrate the holiday with your family. Remember those who 244 years ago were freezing to death on this icy riverbank and who sacrificed so much so that we could be free. Thank you. God bless you. And Merry Christmas. I'm Lake Green with Patriot Pets.